Hi, I'm Suzanne Crouch, and welcome to our Legislator Fireside Chats. And I have the honor and privilege of having with me today Representative Jim Pressel. And Representative Pressel, um, welcome. And you're up in Northwest Indiana, is that not correct, up around Laporte? I am. I'm in Laporte. I represent uh, about two thirds of Laporte County, the northern half of Stark County, um, and just at the bottom of Lake Michigan. So everybody asks, where is, well, actually, I'm from Rolling Prairie. So nobody knows where Rolling Prairie is. So it's about 10 miles south of Lake Michigan. And they go, aha. Ah, we all know where Lake Michigan yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me, how did you get involved in public service? I'm a builder in my real life. And I, I spent a lot of time at planning and zoning meetings um, to the point where when um, uh, an opportunity came up to be on the, the zoning board in LaPorte County, they said, rather than you said over there, how about you join us up here? You, you make good decisions. Um, and we'd love to have that expertise. And that was kind of the, kind of the start. And I never really envisioned um, running for an office until uh, Representative Dermody, uh, a friend of ours, uh, decided he was gonna step down and he reached out and said, I think you'd be really good at this job. So kind of toyed around with it for a little bit and uh, here I am, five years later. You enjoy it? Yeah, most days, <laughs> uh, most days. It has its drawbacks, that's for sure. Oh, well, everything does. But, you know, it has certainly been challenging with COVID going on, and it has certainly presented a lot of new challenges. It has. But, uh, you know, the, the General Assembly this year in the, the age of COVID, um, much to my amazement, I didn't know how much work we would get done, how long we would be here, would there be outbreaks or anything. But I, we have been very cautious and we have really gotten a lot of work done. Um, so I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that as we, we move Hoosiers forward and adopt policy and remove policy. You know, COVID's brought a lot of changes for all of us, um, and especially in government. And I think we're learning how to be more cost effective and we're, we're learning how to be more effective with our constituents and, and try and figure all this out. So it's been, it's been a good learning experience this year. Well, and some of those changes will probably will carry forward. You Absolutely. Know? And, and, you know, because as you said, we've learned how to be maybe a little more efficient, a little more cost effective, and that benefits the taxpayer at the end of the day. That, that's what we're here to do, right? Yeah. Benefit our constituents, it is. That's right, and, and, and a little over a million Hoosiers have either gotten their first or have gotten both shots. I'm one that has gotten both shots, uh, and it's an extremely liberating feeling to know that that's something you don't have to worry about. Right. You know, you still have to protect yourself and protect others, but... Um, it, it, it's, um, you know, so I just did mine this morning, probably 15 minutes ago, uh, 20 minutes ago. Um, a little apprehensive at first, and I don't do needles well at all. Um, I've got a few stories that we'll save for a later time on the, the needles thing, but um, it was painless, it was quick, and I was very impressed at how fast the, the line moved. I mean, you're in there, you're out of there, and I, I do feel good about getting it. I was a little apprehensive at first. I was too, I was too, but um, you know, it is, it is a liberating feeling, and it's gonna get us on the road to getting back to normal. Um, you know, when you talk about legislation, there's so many bills out there, but there's really an important bill that maybe a lot of people don't know about, and that is the cardiac arrest bill. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So on uh, the sudden cardiac arrest bill, it's House Bill uh, 1040, that actually came to me th um, from a constituent. And um, uh, it's, it's kind of a sad story, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's a worth the fight here. So her son, Jake, um, died of sudden cardiac arrest during football. And the, the simplest things that we could do to protect our, our kids as athletes is to get a heart screening. And we really don't put the information out there and a lot of people aren't aware of it. And uh, when Julie came to me with the issue and wanted to, to work on it statewide to get awareness and education, um, I, I was kind of dumbfounded that we don't already do this. And, and it's the, the largest, it's a, the nation's number one killer of student athletes is sudden cardiac arrest. And it can be symptoms that um, just shortness of breath. Um, but being able to detect those symptoms and give them the information on um, heart screenings, EKGs, um, so simple. So I'm, I'm really proud to be working on that one this year. Um, it's, it's going well. We're going to hear the second part of it in the Senate. It's in Senate uh, education for the, the amended vote tomorrow. So I'm hopeful we move that and we can come back next year and make it even a little bit better. 
Well, and that's why you're such a good public servant, because you actually kind of take up issues that really impact people in their lives. And so thank you for that. In closing, can you tell our listeners something about Jim Presso that might surprise them or they may not know? Um, you know, I, um, I think when you're a public figure, everybody expects that you have been to college and you have done this corporate career. You're an attorney, right? So Jim Pressel is a farm kid that drove a truck across country for about 10 years. And then I started a, a small company to, um, I would clean your garage, I would replace your roof, I would do whatever it took. And I never did the opportunity for higher education. And I've, I've worked very hard um, for the, the, the programs, the CTE programs. So um, it was a struggle for me to get through high school. And if it wouldn't have been for some of those programs to point me in that direction, um, I, I, I might not be here today, that's for sure. So you don't need a college education to do this. And I think um, that's a perception that we need to change. I, and I couldn't agree with you more. One of our most hardworking, compassionate legislators, Representative Jim Pressel, thank you.